Today we'll be maxing the newest 5 star weapon, Aqua Simulacra, still not sure if I'm saying that right, but I think there will be a little bit to farm because of these enemies, I haven't really farmed them outside of the first thing we needed them for, thankfully they are rather quick to farm, unthankfully, um, they are a little scarce. Finally got through all my 3 star weapons, now we can really go, level 40. Wow, and it already has 50% crit damage. I actually didn't look at the stats yet. This is probably going to be similar to Redhorn Stone Thresher, and it makes sense because Yalan um, doesn't really care about attack at all. Everything scales off of max HP besides her basics. 65 crit damage. Wow, will this even be lower than Redhorn in terms of base attack? I, I don't think it will be, like, but geez, it's already at 72. But yeah, we're already a little bit stuck here. Let's go to the crafting table and uh, see how many we can craft. I know we had a decent amount of the smallest ones, yeah. We might not even... Oh, no. Yikes. That's only 10. I think you need over 20 for level 90, so... Yeah, it looks like it'll be about, like, Redhorn Stone Thresher, but we need 25 purples. That's going to be a pain. Thankfully, Bones has agreed to let me farm her world in case this isn't, isn't enough. I also have little stars where all the enemies appear, so farming these guys does bring back a bit of bad memory because I had such a hard time getting into some of the places they were at. Also, I've been uh, trying Singcho and Yolan together. It's actually pretty interesting. Like, look at all this happening. <laughs> Well, he died too fast to really see anything. Down here, there are three of them. They were kind of hard to find as well because you have to break this uh, little stone thing. But yeah, let's go ahead and give a double Singcho, double Yolan tr a try again here just for fun. So yeah, uh, I don't think we should have any problems vaporizing Hu Tao's charge attacks now. <laughs> I'll probably touch on this in the god mode. So the double Geo team with Hu Tao, Yolan doesn't have enough Hydro to keep up with all the Geo stuff. But coincidentally, that's like the only team where Yolan can't keep up. Because in a way, it's a little bit unfortunate because it caused so much confusion, but... Uh, it's good to know, I guess. This place is probably the most annoying to get to, but there's two there, so can't ignore it. So I'm pretty sure that was all. Let's see if it's enough. 16? I don't think so. But this shop did just reset, and we still have so much of this stuff up here that I don't mind. Of course, gonna get the important things first. And then, yeah, let's grab these. I don't know if even this will be enough, but I really don't want to waste star glitter on it. I am gonna get this Kea, though. Let's go, C3. I think we only need, like, three more purples or something, so this actually should be enough. Yes, indeed, let's go! And yeah, exact same stats as Redhorn Stone Thresher. I kind of figured it'd be a little higher, but yeah, they always just have like set ratios. Same exact stats. When Redhorn Stone Thresher came out, its massive crit damage, you know, was the thing that really made it incredible. And it's going to be the same for this bow. But the thing with this bow is it's even better because with Redhorn Stone Thresher, its passive wasn't that great outside of units like Ito or Noel. This one, on the other hand, while the 16% HP increase won't be that great for anyone besides Yalan. The second part of the passive, 20% damage dealt, if there are any enemies nearby, that's gonna be great for everyone. So I'm very happy to see that this is a bow pretty much anyone can use and take advantage of. Sure, it has a lower base attack, but it more than makes up for that with a massive crit damage. Besides the obvious Yalan, who else would take a big advantage of this bow? Any damage dealer, really. Yomya is kind of an exception because, you know, Thundering Pulse is probably still gonna be better, and if not Thundering Pulse, perhaps even Rust. Since we were trying Yomya pretty recently, I'm probably going to give her Thundering Pulse and give her this bow, it should be a pretty easy comparison because they both have crit damage. There are a couple characters I don't think it's going to be that great for, Sara in particular, because her attack boost is based off base attack like Binny, and it does have low base attack. I don't think it'd be great for Goro either because Goro can't do a lot of damage and giving him that much crit damage is kind of a waste. I'd personally rather stick with Favonius. I think it'd be amazing for Blizzard Stray or Ganyu because you kind of want to stack as much crit damage as possible since she's going to get most of her crit rate from the Blizzard Strayer set anyway. Aloy I'm still not too familiar with so I mean probably I know she can deal some damage. But yeah basically it is a pure damage bow so any bow user that focuses on damage which is I think the majority of them uh, will take good advantage of it. Again, I do kind of want to compare it to Thundering Pulse, just so I'm not saying that as a theory. Um, but I do think Thundering Pulse will still be better for Yoimiya than this bow. As far as base stats are concerned, I actually do prefer Aqua's lower base to higher crit damage. But I think it's when we're comparing the passives where I don't think Aqua can make up for it. 20% extra attack here, and then another 40% normal attack bonus when you have the three stacks. So we're going to give it a bit of a test run. Most of the time I totally forget she needs to not be at full burst to actually get all four stacks. So I guess that is one point to the Aqua. You don't really need to think about anything at all. So I'm just gonna do pretty much my typical setup. We're gonna have Yalan here, we're gonna have Binny, 
And then we're just gonna go ahead and go to Yoimiya and uh, check out like the highest number I can see here, which is what which was an 81. I mean, it should be a little bit higher as we go deeper into Yalan's burst, but we couldn't see anything there besides an 81. I think that's another reason Shimanawa is actually pretty good for Yoimiya. <laughs> that kind of took the need off to think about uh, the Thundering Pulse third stack. All right, let's go ahead and try it again here. Another 81. So, I mean, we could just compare to that, honestly. I mean, I'm not expecting it to be super far off, honestly. So, if you don't have Thundering Pulse, I'm sure it would be a very good option. Also, let's go ahead and throw it on her and see what happens. She does have over 200 crit damage now, which is kind of cool. And she's a little bit less fragile than she was before, actually. You know, I'm kind of happy about it because my Yonya had like 15k HP before and uh, she was getting one shot. So, AHP does have some use, of course. How close do you have to be for this damage increase? I don't see any, like, up arrows, but I would assume, like, if you hear battle music and you're actually in a battle, that should be good enough. Let's see what Yoimiya can do here now. I didn't see that, that same attack that happened the first time, so we're gonna have to do it again. 59? Was that the previous 81? I find that a little bit hard to believe. Well, there was a 69, but that came later. While I had a bigger boost from Yelan, so I don't know. I really wasn't expecting it to be that big, but we're doing the same exact rotation both times. I want to give it as fair of a chance as I can, so I'm doing a fourth run here. 58. 73? Okay, that was definitely closer, and I think that... That 78, though, I'm not counting, because that was definitely, like, near the end of Yelan's burst. And all those 81s we saw from, you know, Thundering Pulse happened basically at the beginning. So it's definitely overall weaker than Thundering Pulse for Yoimiya, but not by a lot. Compared to Rust, it's hard to say as I have a level one Rust and I have no plans to really max out a Rust, because I don't think Rust is gonna be better than Thundering Pulse. It is by far her best free to play weapon, but still don't think it's as good as Pulse. So definitely solid, doesn't beat Thundering Pulse for Yoimiya. I think the main contender outside of Yelan, of course, is gonna be Ganyu. Of course, she does have Polar Star as well. And yeah, you get a 12% bonus damage to skill and burst here, up to 48% attack here when you have the four stacks. This does have a crit rate passive, so you can completely ignore crit rate on artifacts if you're going Blizzard Strayer. Uh, this one has crit damage, so you could have a potentially much higher crit damage. And since she definitely doesn't want Thundering Pulse, I can't really directly compare it to another crit damage bow. Oh look, they finally have this stuff. Oh, it's all the same? Oh, okay. I thought it would be specific to the artifact pieces, but it's all the same. Okay, that's less helpful than I thought it would be. It's like, yeah, most people go crit damage and then crit rate. Pretty obvious anyway. I know it's character specific because we have cryo damage here, and then mostly attack percent here. And then of course this is completely useless because you only have one choice. Maybe they'll refine it at one point to include substats or have it change depending on which actual piece you're selecting. Oh, actually it looks super good on Ganyu as well. If I didn't know better, I'd say that was her signature weapon also. It almost like blends into her hand, like it's just an, an extension of herself. Let's check out those attributes. Can we get over 300% crit damage? Kaboom, we can. We have 330% crit damage. <laughs> and actually not a small amount of crit rate. Like, that's enough crit rate. What the hell? Those are some pretty insane stats. All right, uh... Let's see what we can do with our Ganyu. I mean, we could actually get a little bit more crit damage, but not a lot. Like, we have 25 here, 25 here, 28 on the Sands, but only 11 on the Goblet. Of course, we have a crit damage circlet. But yeah, let's give our 330 crit damage Ganyu a shot here. Guess we are gonna stick with Yelan here, which does introduce the fact that I do have to basic attack with Ganyu anyway. All right, setup is pretty much ready to go. Let's give it a try. See what she can do. 61k charge. I've definitely never seen that that high. We should probably do a couple basics to keep him frozen. Yeah, all I could really see was 161k, and then everything got messed up, I guess. <laughs> but that is quite high for a uh, Blizzard Strayer Ganyu, I believe. Let's go ahead and give this another try here. Uh, I couldn't see. 60k, yeah. Could probably potentially be a little bit higher, uh, especially if I... Especially if I did Yelan first and then Binny. So yeah, what I'm thinking about right now is that if you want the most damage, this is going to be her best bow. Polar Star is cool, you know, it has crit rate and big attack boost, but, but at the end of the day, I have pretty much as little crit rate as possible already on the artifacts that she has, and she still has enough. So if I were just to swap over Polar Star, I'd have 60 crit rate and 90 less crit damage. I want to do one more run with Aqua here first. Uh, there's a 54. 
A 58. And I totally forgot about this 20% uh, crit rate bonus she gives herself for her frost flake arrows. So 33 with that and Blizzard Strayer is nearly 100% crit rate already. But yeah, we can say around 60k with like an okay setup going on there. I can't imagine Polar Star is going to be able to keep up because again, I can't... I can't replace that crit damage anyhow at all. I can't do anything about it and too much crit rate. I mean, yeah, if you could get all the crit rate off your artifacts, which I don't even have a lot, 2.7, 5.8, 10.9 on Goblet is a little high and then 8.9 on Circlet, which what else are you gonna have there anyway as one of the four subs? So for all four stacks, we gotta do normal attack, charge attack, skill and burst. All right, let's see if we can manage this anyhow. We're going to start with Yalan burst. Try and do that a little bit. Uh, gonna do, uh, Ganyu skill and burst, normal attack there a couple times, and then shoot. 49? I mean, I'm still- oh, 54? I'm still impressed with that, honestly. Yeah, 54 after one try. Uh, maybe everything wasn't completely perfect, but Polar Star, even though it's giving up 90% crit damage, can still hold its own, I guess, just with the passive, really. It is a little harder to make sure you have all four stacks, so there is that. A big thing, in my opinion, because, yeah, I don't think everyone plays so for formulaic, where you have, like, the energy charge of your others down to a T where you have like, you know, some kind of systematic rotation where everyone has their burst perfectly at the right time all the time. I just don't think most people are that nerdy. Yeah, 53, 54. I'm pretty sure we have all four stacks at this point, 56. Still no 60s, but if you think you're gonna be in the position not only to have the four stacks pretty consistently, but also basically only having pure crit damage, or if you're going for Melt Ganyu, then Polar Star is probably even a little better. You know, you're gonna actually need that crit rate, unlike Blizzard Ganyu, so it really depends. They're both very good bows for Ganyu. How I use Ganyu, and in my position, Aqua is definitely better, also because it is simpler to use. 91? Was that a melt? I am back to Aqua, by the way. Yeah, 61. 62. 64. I made sure I was doing some basics with Polar Star, but I'm definitely forgetting with this bow, which is still important because Yelan needs those basics to apply wet. I'm sure it'd be fantastic for Child as well. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a very simple bow. Has a lot of crit damage, has a 20% damage bonus just all the time, whenever you are near an enemy, whatever that means, which should be pretty much any time you're in a battle. All damage bonuses, similar to Yalan's burst passive, are just really, really strong. So in summary, I'd say it's good for every damage-focused bow user. It's still definitely good for Yoimiya, don't get me wrong, it's just that she has other options. Sara probably wants more base attack on her bow, kinda wasted on Goro. Diona, I think, can also do some decent damage as a support. Uh, Amber. Again, other options for units like Venti. But yeah, Ganyu is definitely up there with Polar Star. I basically just want to say I'm super happy it's it's a pretty simple bow. It doesn't have some passive like when the active character uh, summons a dice looking object, hmm, who could that be? Then they will have a 1000% damage bonus. I'd say it's an incredibly versatile bow, so if I could only have one bow, it would probably be this one. Those are just my thoughts on it though. Feel free to leave your own in the comments down below. Also, leaving a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed the content is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks. As always for watching, and until next time.